Welcome to Innovation and Leadership. I'm Jess Larson. This is part three of our interview with Jay Davis. And, and I think that's the other lesson you'll see is like every single one of these people uh, has had a long career and they've had wins and they've had losses and they've just kind of stuck with it. I mean, even going back to our earlier conversation, like I've had wins and I've had losses as an entrepreneur, but that's why I think most successful entrepreneurs if you missed the first two parts, please go back and check those. But Jay, picking up where we left off, um, l let's just jump back into it. Well, this is like, um, you know, there's just been a lot of great examples for me lately. A lot of them in, in the mini series that we've done, like people yeah, we've yeah. interviewed. But like, uh, there's, I, c I can't remember his name, but he started Quest Nutrition. And I just watched a video with him where he's talking about how, you know, he kind of had that experience of like, he ha was broke, old car building his company and then he sold his company for cash and like from one day to the next he went from like you know a thousand dollars in the bank to like 50 million dollars in the bank like over like the course of a week all of a sudden the money was there and he was like and nothing changed like i didn't change how i felt about myself it didn't change you know any of my like emotional challenges or emotional like uh, positive things I felt about myself. And I, and I think that's a crucial lesson is when the end goal is so much, um, Andrew Smith, who we just interviewed for the podcast, who I'm, I think was just an amazing person, an amazing interview, but he said, and, and his, for people that know him, that he and his wife, they've, they've got 170 restaurants now did 800 million in revenue last year. Yeah. It's just a great like episode. Amazing by the way. entrepreneur. But one of the things he said when he's looking to partner with people, because they go in and they take basically, you know, a restaurant that has three or four locations or maybe even one, and they grow them to 50 locations, 75 locations, and help them with that rapid growth. But one of the things he said when he's talking to an, uh, a restaurant owner who they're considering buying their restaurant, he's always asking them, like, what's your motivation? And if the motivation is money, he's always like, no, I don't want to work with you. And that's just a huge red flag for him. And I've noticed that too. Like people who want to be entrepreneurs because they want to be rich, like there are a lot of better ways to make money that are more likely for you to just even make any money <laughs> than being an entrepreneur. And so like even with Pillow Cube, it was, I didn't do it because I wanted to be rich because I'm thinking that it's the next unicorn. I did it because I liked the idea it was a pain I saw in the market, and I wanted to know if it would work. You know, Gary Vee says this, like he's always saying, because I effing love the game. And it's like, I love the game. I love starting companies. I love creating it's ideas. It's not like you don't want the money. Products. It's not like the, the, yeah. the toys are more fun. Yeah, yeah. But, but at the same time, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. Like, I think about, I was 24 and I just left m and at Citigroup and I, I went over, started selling investments and was able to buy this like S-Class Mercedes. And I remember like, I just, I'd been dreaming about a fancy car for years and I just like thought this is, my life was going to change, right? Yeah. And like a week later, I'm like, nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares that I have this car. Like I can see if you can afford that car, I can see why you want to drive that one. Yeah. Like it's a really nice car. Yeah. And I was like, it's just a car. There's no fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like a month later, I sold it to buy an investment. Yeah. Because it was like, it just wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And which is funny because unlike Warren Buffett, I bought a speculative investment and lost it all. So I should have <laughs> just kept the car. <laughs> right? But, well, let, let's do this. With it, I know we're winding down here for part two. Um, tell people a little bit about what interested you in doing the mini series with me and and maybe a couple of highlights of what people can look forward to. Yeah. So um, I, I think a big interest was one, just meeting great people. Um, and it's been super fun. Can you talk um, about who we've had so far? Yes. Yeah, so we've had like Andrew Smith from four food groups um, who we just talked about. We've had uh, Joe um, Senna. DeSena? Yeah, DeSena, who's the... So we've had Joe DeSena, who's the CEO of Spartan Race. Uh, they also, He's also you know founded the Death Race and like all these insane physical challenges. He was amazing, like just such an incredible entrepreneur. And, and it's also interesting how many of these people, like you kind of think, of, see them and they're passionate and, and some people might even say intense. And yet they're like the most giving, generous, amazing people. It's just been so you fun know, getting to meet I them. I emailed him back and just said, 
how great it was to interview him because even though he's doing 150 million bucks a year, however much that is when yeah. you add up yeah. 1.3 million oh racers gosh. a year times 100 bucks, they're amazing. I was like, you know, I you know, you're on you're on 60 Minutes and Forbes, and we're I know our show is not a big deal, and it was it was I liked how you treated us like such regular people. Like, yeah, yeah. Like um, I can't remember how I worded it, but I basically just said like it says a lot about you the way you treated Jay and I when we are not 60 minutes or Forbes or whatever. Yeah. And, and I think that that's something I've seen with most of these entrepreneurs that they just realize that they're just people. I mean, Andrew even specifically said that, like you meet these big entrepreneurs, you realize like they're just people. Um, they still want to have relationships and friendships. And as we've gone into it, I've learned like, don't go in asking for anything. Don't go in trying to hope that they're going to, you know, invest in pillow cube or something, you know, which, like, you know, we've gone and met with, you know, we've had these venture capitalists yeah, like and met, people who definitely could. Yep. Yeah. We've met like, uh, Peterson partners. We interviewed Ben Capel from Peterson partners who invested in all birds, like tons of great, smart investments. Um, the guys you know, at the university fund that are in Snapchat and all those yeah, ones. Right. Yeah. So we've like been able to just meet these amazing people. Um, Divi just raised 250 million bucks. Yeah, yeah Alex from Divi. I, and, and as you kind of meet these people, it's just been really fun to learn about their entrepreneurial path that they're not that they're not like uh you different. Know, yeah, they're just normal like people who they've achieved worked hard. Mastery. Yep. They've worked their hardest. So that's what was really interesting to me to about doing the mini series, but then also just learning more about marketing. I I think like anyone who's listening to the podcast like they're they're listening because they want to continually learn. And that's a goal for all of us. And I think that whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're uh, you, you know, just an innovator, not just an innovator, but if you're an innovator in your company, no matter where you're at, all of us just want to learn. We're, we're trying to uh, learn things that we didn't know beforehand. So I think this mini-series will be super fun for people. We're hearing a lot of kind of behind-the-scenes stories of how things got started uh you know and how they almost missed the investment in snapchat yeah <laughs> you know like yeah um how easy it is to uh to kind of overlook things or miss an opportunity um so i think it'll be a good experience for people whether you're starting a startup or you're at a bigger company and you're just trying to kind of ignite some marketing magic i think it'll be really fun you know i was thinking about your statement of they're just normal people like in certain ways they're not in certain ways, they have done exceptional things and they have yeah, yeah. paid the price that other people have been willing to pay and they yeah. maybe came to earth with some different aptitudes that they then doubled down on. Uh, but I think that's not the surprising part. We already yeah, knew yeah. they're exceptional. That's how yeah, they yeah. got raised yes. 250 million bucks. That's how yeah, that's they why paid we 800 million revenue, right? Yeah. The surprise is like that they, you know, I don't think we've, in, and anybody in the series, we, we've been lucky we haven't anybody who's full of themselves. Oh, no. You know, in 300 episodes of this show, I've I've had some folks that are pretty sure they're, you know, yeah, <laughs> they're God's yeah. gift to the rest of yeah, us, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, anyways, I think it's that like I think I look up to these people so much, and we're like, oh, Jay, guess who we're <laughs> guess who yeah. we got, right? Yeah. And then we go meet with them, and you're like, I don't know, I honestly don't know how to like exactly put words to it because it's so surprising when I've put them on this pedestal to realize. They're they're exceptional. They're exceptional, but just like us. Yeah. Anyway, no, I think it's a really good point, and it's amazing. Like, I mean, Joe was like, "Hey, come to my farm," in, you know, uh, I think it was in New York, uh, uh, Maine, Maine. Yeah, and like, come to my farm. I'll Bring put you your through family. Workout. I'll put you through a workout. Like, they're just great people, and so it's been really fun. I'm super excited for people to listen to them. I mean, all of them I've left inspired to like. I'm gonna go work harder. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna be a better leader innovator entrepreneur so i think it'll be really fun for people um but but i think that's the point of these pot like that's why i've been excited about doing the podcast is just getting to meet people who are maybe a little bit outside of my normal circle of influence um and who inspire me to go do great things um because like you said like they're normal people but they've also done exceptional things and so it's just really fun so i love it well uh these episodes will be the mini series will be coming out here on innovation and leadership and then uh it th you if you want just those episodes there's going to be a standalone startup marketing yeah. for geniuses and even after the mini series over hopefully you guys keep going yeah. with that one we're going to keep it becomes a long-term thing 
yeah, we're going to keep taking it and kind of make it uh, the creatively podcast that, that will focus, focus on these startup marketing geniuses and just people who have done stuff uh, that hopefully will help people who feel stuck and who are kind of like, hey, I want to do something. I want to start something. And, and I think that's the other lesson you'll see is like every single one of these people uh, has had a long career and they've had wins and they've had losses and they've just kind of stuck with it. I mean, even going back to our earlier conversation, like I've had wins and I've had losses as an entrepreneur, but that's why I think most successful entrepreneurs started their successful venture at 40 or in their forties, but that wasn't their first attempt. Um, because it just takes like, I mean, like anything you got to swing, again and again and again and again and again and again and then eventually you connect um and that's what's hard about entrepreneurship i think is that a lot of people who talk about it it's like dude get your first one out of the way because the likelihood it's going to work is very low um so do this first make it survivable yeah yeah just make it survivable and get it out of the way yeah you know uh you look at the statistics of how many millionaires self-made millionaires didn't make their first million till their 60s yeah you know, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, if I, I guess I'm not a total waste of skin because I didn't do it at Mark Zuckerberg's age, right? Yeah, the, that's the exception. I think that's, again, kind of, that's, uh, I love that Gary Vaynerchuk quote where it's like, dude, you gotta, if you're doing it about for the money, it's gonna be a disappointing ride. I mean, even Andrew talked about this. Like, he sold his first company and went and bought a Ferrari. And then, thought three that was gonna make later, him feel great. Yeah, it was, thought it was gonna make him feel great. Then three weeks later, it wasn't he was enough. Like, and I was that didn't make me happy. I'm gonna go buy another one, and, he and did. that didn't make him happy. And I think that's the realization. That's hard when you're hearing someone like who's that successful. You're like, yeah, but and there's there's all these justifications. And, and he he does race cars, and he's in the Porsche racing circuit with like yeah. Todd Peterson and those guys. Yeah, and he enjoys that, right? Yeah, but but it doesn't the way make he him talked happy. about his family and stuff. Yeah, it's not like his, those things became more important. Anyway. Yeah, it's something he enjoys and it's fun. And I think that's. That's the key to remember is that like for for each of us, if if you want to be an innovator, if you, no matter what you want to be, love it and do it because you want to be great at it, and that's the passion. Let for the me. money be the byproduct. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I love coming up with new ideas, <laughs> turning them into Jay, reality. Where were you fifteen years ago? Them. Do you know how many yeah. of like my catastrophe businesses were like, oh, we could make a lot of money on this deal? Me too. It was, <laughs> and that's like now become my it was like. An, I really would not want to do that if it paid the same as other things. Yes. Yes. And that's what's so funny. Like most of my fails have, and I think this is why I keep coming back to this point. Most of my entrepreneurial failures started with a bunch of guys talking about how rich we were going to get. And then you get into it and you're like, I don't love this idea. I don't love this is really hard. This thing. It's really hard. And turns out we're not rich yet. And even if it is successful, that doesn't make it like I, I have so many friends who've had successful businesses or people that I know that have had successful businesses and they don't like it. They're not having fun. They're not enjoying it. And they're like, I want to get back to like starting something new. And so I think you realize what you love, what you're passionate about, follow that. And, and anything that starts with the conversation of, man, we're going to be so rich is usually a huge warning sign for me. Yeah. And obviously I'm trying to do business you know, I'm trying to do businesses that make money. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm not, I've yeah. already got a nonprofit. Hard, That's not hard all to run a business that makes no money. Yeah. You know, I suck at raising money for our, our, our child rescue charity. So I'm like, I'm trying to make enough money to just pay for the charity. Yeah. Right. Um, at the same time, it's like uh, Elon Musk who says entrepreneurship is like eating, gla- you know, uh, staring into the bits and eating glass or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like, this is going to really, really suck at some point. So, uh, so you better really love it too, yeah. because the money won't be enough to stick with it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I love it. People, please tune in. Uh, Jay, thanks for coming on. Thanks hey. for doing the mini series. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye. Well, that's it for the episode. One other thing I wanted to tell you about, if you'll remember the guys from convoy, uh, in episodes back, Ken free and, Trent Mano. I went on one of their CEO trips to New York and I met a guy named Brent Thompson, very successful entrepreneur. He was former CEO of Jive Communications, big uh, company now, I think three or $400 million. Anyways, he, uh, he started a new company called blipbillboards.com. I'm super stoked they're a sponsor now, but I, I remember 
a year and some ago when I met him, I thought it was genius. Instead of having to buy six months or a year's worth of billboard um, for thousands of dollars, you can buy eight seconds at a time for like 10 or 20 cents. You pick what billboard you want it on, what time of day you want it to run. And it just puts so much power in the hands of, of marketers and CEOs who want to try something and see if it works. You can buy as many or as few as you want, change it as many times as you want. Uh, I think now our podcast is being advertised on billboards in like 18 different states because we have these guys as sponsors. We're pretty excited about it. Hope you check out blipbillboards.com. Thanks.